And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show on a night that was a bounce back for the Penguins and a step back for the Rangers. Welcome into the Delta MSG studios, John Giannone, Steve Valiquette. There was an American author named Gertrude Stein who once said of her old hometown of Oakland, there was no there there. And I kind of felt like that's maybe the way to describe a lot of what we saw about the Rangers tonight. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Well, nothing could spark them, right? Not a Brennan Smith fight, not right. a Shesterkin save, not Heedle driving the net in the third period. It was an abysmal game. Hockey players are not ones to make excuses, though. They're not. Um, at some point, the players may say, and this might be at the closing of the season, that they weren't feeling well after the vaccination that the team got on Tuesday after the game. That could happen. I don't know, but to me, and I'm just eyeballs here, everybody looked lethargic. Mm -hmm. Everybody was disjointed, and the team didn't look like they had that second effort that we saw on Tuesday, and the, which, f for the most part, this team has really had an, as a badge of honor uh, for the last two and a half to three years. I, I've always believed in their effort. Uh, twice this season, they had bad efforts against Jersey and Buffalo. Mm -hmm. that just, that's it. So I would say that based on past performance, this isn't something that I expected to see tonight unless there's another factor that I'm just not aware of. And really, if you watch the game, the first seven or eight minutes is when the tone was set and it was as much from the territorial advantage that Pittsburgh had. Yeah. They put up 10 shots on goal in the first seven or eight minutes. The 10th, actually, it was at six and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. The 10th was the one that went in the net to give Pittsburgh the lead. And you just got the feeling at that point that Pittsburgh was out to avenge what had happened to them two nights earlier, and maybe the Rangers just weren't ready for it. Maybe. You know, it could be just a start thing. I certainly didn't like the start. I did like the response from Shesterkin. He was ready to go. 7.05 is puck drop, and he's ready to play. He has big saves early on to at least allow the guys to rally at that point, John, to believe that, hey, we can get out of this first 10. Shesty's going to help us out here and, and get us going. He had a lot of fight in his game. He had extra effort. He loses his stick here, finds a way to make saves isn't able to make a save here, and that was a reach goal. And uh, Zdorna makes a nice play there. you got to give him credit. He's a big guy. But the thing that bothers me about that goal is that the Rangers don't do that more often. I don't know. I was a goalie. I don't know how hard it is to put that in your game plan if you're Heedle. You saw him do it in the third period. If you're guys like Kreider and Zabanajad, I wouldn't expect Panarin to do it because he's just slighter and more shifty. And, mm -hmm. But you've got four or five big bodies, Goche when he's in the lineup, that why not just have that as a part of your game plan? Every night, I don't care what happens, I'm taking it twice. You're getting a penalty or you're going to get a scoring opportunity. I think that's something, Bushnevich too. Bushnevich did it on Tuesday. Zabanajad scored five hole on the rebound. That's a, that's a drive. That's just... Getting a step on somebody and having the initiative every night to have a game plan, I, I wish I saw that a little bit more in the Rangers game. So the Rangers, after the first period, were down one nothing. Early in the second, they get a man advantage, and they take advantage. And a, a guy who scored the first goal in the game two nights ago, and a guy who has really cashed in his opportunities, I think he only has about 44 shots on goal this season, mm -hmm. scores his 11th tonight, and that's Colin Blackwell. He's leading the NHL right now in finishing on his scoring chances, okay? Think about that. You look around the league. Matthews gets his scoring chances, and so does McDavid and Dreisaitl. You see them scoring beautiful goals every night. Well, this guy, based on the amount that he gets, finishes most frequently, okay? That's enough to make your head spin, and, and you wonder why. But I have to say that he's had a second effort to his game all season long. He deserves what he's been able to carve out is, is a spot in the lineup next season. If everybody develops at the pace that they should, he should be there. And maybe it's a bottom six role, but you can see the confusion the Rangers are able to set up here as they move the puck around on the power play. But he's always on the puck. Kako and Bushnevich are moving it around. But all of his decision making is to be stick on the ice, get one knee down and finish a play that he's waiting for. Zabanajad was in the same position in the first part of that power play. Blackwell finishes it. Maybe he's getting a little bit more room because he goes unnoticed a little bit, but 
you got to give him a lot of credit. He's had an outstanding season. Yeah, but only a minute 21 later, the Penguins would score, take the lead, and it was a lead they would not relinquish. Adam Fox got an assist on the second Rangers goal. That was late in the third period. That extends his point streak now to 12 straight, just five games behind Brian Leach's record for consecutive games with a point by a defenseman. Here's Adam Fox's reaction to the 5-2 Ranger loss to the Penguins. Michelle, go ahead. Adam, just curious what Pittsburgh did to make it so difficult for you guys to kind of find your rhythm in five-on-five five play tonight. Uh, I think they were just on top of us, you know, all game. It seemed like we were, you know, turning over in the neutral zone, starting their transition, and, uh, you know, they did a good job forechecking and hemming us in our zone, zone a little bit and, uh, you know, some breakdowns, and they got some good looks on it. So, uh, you know, obviously they, they came out a little faster, and, uh, you know, it was obviously just a, a tough one for us. Next question comes from Dan Rosen. Dan, go ahead. Yeah, Adam, along those lines, I'm just curious. I mean, were they just a little bit tighter tonight, too, than they were the other night? Maybe less chance for chance type of game? And, and uh, that worked in their favor instead of yours in this one? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, any time a game's, you know, running gun a little bit and you put up eight, a team's going to definitely tighten it up. And that's what they did. And you could tell they were just playing from the middle out in the D zone. and. Uh, you know, kind of limiting our chances and, uh, you know, you knew they were going to come out fast after last game. So, you know, they, they did a good job limiting us and, uh, you know, I think we just got to do a better job of, of limiting their chances when, when, uh, when they get going like that. Next question comes from Tom Marion. Tom, go ahead. Adam, are you starting to look at these as lost opportunities as you get down to the final month or so of the season, particularly the way a team you're chasing? Of course. Uh, you know, I think everyone said it. Every point's huge right now. and. Uh, you know, losing games never helps, and uh, yeah, definitely missed opportunity. But uh, you know, a quick turnaround for us tomorrow, so a good opportunity to, to try and get it back. And maybe that's the best news for the Rangers right back on the ice tomorrow night on Long Island. But you heard him confirm our contentions mm -hmm. that just how much faster Pittsburgh was than the Rangers early on. Look, if you told me before the season, and this is before this game, you're 18 games to go, and you're five points out, which is now going to be 17 to go, and it looks like seven. Is that a final yep. with Boston? Mm -hmm. You know, the math gets hard now, but you're still close, and it's still important that everybody just prepares the same way, learns, learns, learns how to win. And, and see, here's the difference, too. Pittsburgh's a winning team, okay? They've got two cups, 16, 17. The hard thing for the Rangers right now is these games that maybe they're not at their best, we haven't seen them win those yet. How many games have they won this year that they didn't deserve to win? Can you think of any? Not many, right? I mean, the goalies haven't really stole a whole bunch like we saw Hank used to do, and that's not on the goalies, but we haven't seen them win a lot of games that they weren't supposed to win. Mm -hmm. If they learn how to get to that point, then they, they're a playoff team. And this is really what's holding them back right now. But the math is tough now. It gets tough. So what do you want to see tomorrow night against the Islanders? Pushback.